Nine years ago, I was aboard Miss Piggy here, flying one of the most dangerous missions ever flown by the Hurricane Hunters. I didn't learn until some years later and talking with some of the crew just how dangerous and nearly deadly that flight was. September 2003, Hurricane Isabel is churning in the Atlantic about to transform into a monstrous Category 5 storm. I joined the elite crew of this P-3 Hurricane Hunter plane, nicknamed Miss Piggy, as they prepare for a potentially deadly journey inside the eye of the storm. We take off in a group of three planes from sunny St. Croix. We're joined by another P-3 Hurricane Hunter, also loaded with special weather gear, and a Gulfstream jet that will fly above us at around 30 to 40,000 feet. The goal is to gather information that can save lives. But these specially trained Department of Commerce crewmen know one mistake could be fatal to everyone on board. Hurricane expert Dr. Chris Lancey remembers that day nine years ago. So what we tried to do was fly as low as possible in as strong as wind as possible. We quickly go from sunny skies to the outer bands of the storm, all with very little turbulence. But this is the easy part. As we fly closer to Isabel's eye, the radar picks out the eye wall. Soon, tension builds along with the turbulence. This is what it's like punching through the eye wall of a Category 5 hurricane. It's a rough ride. We finally break through the eye and suddenly go from violent white knuckle turbulence to complete calm. We measure Isabel's eye wall at 45 miles in diameter that day. That means if the left side of Isabel were over downtown St. Petersburg, the outer wall on the right side would reach all the way to Plant City. Next, the crew drops high power wind gauges out of the plane. The wind speed, a ferocious 156 miles per hour. I had the opportunity to fly for several years aboard the Hurricane Hunters, and those series of flights were very, very memorable because we we're seeing something we had not observed before. The crew dives lower and lower, 1,200 feet. 900 feet, 600 feet, 400 feet, to just 200 feet above the surface of the Atlantic. The goal, to better understand why hurricanes get so big in such a short amount of time, a phenomenon known as rapid deepening. Below us, the ocean whips up 40 to 50 foot swells, with salt spray another 20 to 40 feet in the air. Typically on a Hurricane Hunter mission, you're flying two miles above the ocean. And when you look down at the sea, even if it's 40 or 50 foot waves, you can't see that, it's, it looks flat. But when we were flying those Fabian and Isabel flights, and we're only a few hundred feet above the ocean, you see each wave, and you can tell how high it is and some of those were getting dang close, it appeared, to hitting the plane. But the danger is greater than we know. And in one of the flights, one year on, caught fire and we almost crashed both planes. During the flight, our P-3 Hurricane Hunter's third engine catches fire. I didn't know it then, but everyone on board the two Hurricane Hunters could have lost their lives that day. I was right behind the pilots and the cockpit started turning white. And that was because we were so close to the waves and the spray, it was hitting the cockpit windows and all the salt was sticking to the windows. The pilot shuts down engine number three to put out the fire. The crew scrambles to pull the floor and roof apart to make sure the fire hasn't spread and we climb rapidly, escaping back to St. Croix. So was it all worth it? The measurements that we did take in there have really helped the science develop and, and advanced our computer models because now we understand what happens at that ocean surface where you may have 30 or 40 foot waves and winds blowing 80 or 100 miles an hour and there's so much foam and spray in the air, it would be hard to breathe. Those kind of missions we'll probably never get to do again. Now I have to say, from inside the plane, you never knew there was any trouble. 
That was the most professional flight crew I've ever seen in my life. And these are the people that go out into every hurricane, making for better forecast and protecting all of us.